All right, welcome everyone. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at these brand new sensors from SwitchBot. We have the SwitchBot contact sensor and the motion sensor. These were provided by SwitchBot today for our review. And these sensors are a little bit different than your standard contact and motion sensors that you would get with something like a alarm system. The SwitchBot contact sensor, for example, provides an ambient light sensor, as well as a built-in motion detector inside the contact sensor itself, which allows you to set up more intelligent smart home routines for your notifications. And the SwitchBot motion sensor also includes those additional ambient light sensors and obviously a motion sensor, which allows you to do some very interesting things for automation as well. The mounting base, which I'll show later, allows you to mount it in several different locations, which makes it better for preventing false alarms from pets, as well as lets you get creative without damaging your house because it has an included magnetic base and it also allows for desk mounting, as well as, as you can see, wall mounting with typical screws or 3M tape. So let's start off by opening up the SwitchBot contact sensor. So here's the SwitchBot contact sensor, the magnetic contact here, which mounts on your door. Here we have the 3M tape and various mount screws with anchors if you want to go that way. And two AAA batteries are included, so you don't need to provide your own batteries. There's a good look at the contact sensor. As you can see, pretty tiny, about double the size of a AAA battery. So on the front of the SwitchBot contact sensor, there is an LED light, which you can turn on and off that will tell you when you've triggered the sensor. You have a button here that allows you to manually trigger the enter and exit routines if you prefer. And you can slide out the back compartment here to expose the battery compartment. So now we just need to pair the SwitchBot contact sensor with the SwitchBot app. So I've already downloaded the app onto my iPhone in a previous video. So we're just gonna go over to the plus sign and look for the contact sensor and then click on start pairing and next. And to trigger pairing mode on the SwitchBot contact sensor, you push and long hold for two seconds on that front button. One, two. So now we can name the contact sensor. We'll call this uh, laundry door. And for some reason, room is disabled. I don't know if that's gonna be available in a future update or if that's a bug or what, but we'll click next. And I highly recommend you get the Smart Hub Mini. That's gonna allow you to do more advanced routines over the internet instead of only relying on Bluetooth. So we're gonna push on our Hub Mini 87. And once you press on your SwitchBot Hub, it will automatically associate it with your Amazon Alexa cloud service. So there's different modes here and you can use it as a door, window, or other. So other would be something for like a cabinet door or drawer, Windows would just be for open and closed, no motion detection. And that's mostly because motion sensors like these work on uh, heat detection. So if you're getting something like a draft through a window, that could set that off as a motion false alarm. And for something like a door that's better sealed and you're not gonna have like infrared heat patterns coming through causing uh, false alarms, you can pair this with a, a motion routine. So I'm gonna select door and select next. And the SwitchBot guided directions here ask us to place the sensor about five to five feet and four inches off of the ground and just gently for now just test the fit with a gentle press of the sticker so that you can reposition if needed. You want to keep the sensor pretty close but not touching. You're going to want to leave a little bit of a gap here like this on the sensor and you're going to want to place it towards the bottom of the um, contact sensor and you can test it by moving it in and out of the way. You should notice that the light changes and then we can push next inside the app. And again the guided steps just tell you that if you wanna do a more permanent installation, if you're on something that you can screw through, you can just go ahead and remove the battery cover and you have your two screw holes here and just follow that as a template. All right, so now we can test the installation. So now we'll just do a bench test of the sensor before we mount it. Open, closed, open and closed. Okay, let's push done. All right, bingo, we're all set. All right, so now that we have the SwitchBot contact sensor set up in the app, we'll return to this later and mount this on a doorway and set up some routines inside the SwitchBot app and create some scenes. But for now, let's switch over to the SwitchBot motion sensor now and unbox and test that out. So inside the SwitchBot motion sensor box, we have our manual, more mounting stickers. Here's the base. And if you look closely here at the top, we have a lock and an unlock icon. And if you slide it to the left, you set it to unlock and the bottom falls out, exposing the magnet base. So we can stick this on any kind of magnetic mount option. 
It also exposes the screw template holes. So if you want to screw this onto something like a wall, you can do so with the included screws. But if you don't want to do that, you can also just lock up the base and it will sit on your desk. And there's different places where you can actually stick this mount on the motion sensor itself. So let me show you that now. So as you can see, we can put it on the back or the bottom of the sensor. So this takes a good amount of pressure to stick in here, but once you do it, it snaps in place. So if you want to do a desk mount application, you could just go ahead and push it on the bottom and then it's gonna just rest on your desk like that. Or if you're gonna articulate this on a wall or something, you can just put it on the back and it would stick against a wall and then uh, you'd be good to go there. But as far as getting the batteries in, there's a uh, nice little cover here on the back. So you just snap that off and it exposes our locations for the batteries. So we'll close that back up. All right, now we're good to go there. So now that we have the batteries in the SwitchBot motion sensor, let's head over to the SwitchBot app and pair that up. Okay, so back in the SwitchBot app, we're gonna push on the plus sign to add another SwitchBot product. The motion sensor is found over Bluetooth. So we're gonna push on that. So at the top of the SwitchBot here, there is this uh, pairing button. So we're gonna push on that for two seconds. It starts flashing. At that point, we can push next it's gonna communicate with the SwitchBot motion sensor. We'll give this a name. I'm gonna try and set this up in the kitchen as a uh, pass-through sensor um, to detect occupancy in there because we have some lights that we always leave on in there and it doesn't make sense to do so when there's no one inside the room. So uh, I'm gonna have this detect motion uh, or the absence of and then shut off the lights when no one's in there. So next. Again, we're gonna pair it with my Hub Mini. Now it's paired it with the Alexa like it did before. And the guided instructions here will tell us again to avoid placing the motion sensor behind a door or facing a window and to keep it away from heat sources such as a heater, Wi-Fi router, uh, or lamp because this little lens sensor here is going to be detecting heat changes. So anything close to the human body temperature, like 98 degrees or so, is gonna throw this thing off. So if anything's emitting heat, that can cause false positives on this. Similarly, you can't really use this outside if it's really hot because it's not gonna find that temperature change if you're somewhere like Florida in the summer where it's already 90 degrees out, it's not gonna pick up that variance in temperature. Typically on a motion sensor, it's gonna be more sensitive detecting changes going across versus towards. So if you're doing something to test this and you're just like walking straight at the sensor, it's not gonna easily pick up motion in that sort of scenario. But if you're tracking across the room in front of it, it should pick that up quite easily. So let's click on next. All right, so now there's different setup options if you have a dog or don't have a dog. So if we were to say yes, you need to mount the sensor just a bit above what the height of the dog would be, but also lower than your chest. And very important, the reset button here needs to be facing down in the pet mode. So facing towards the ground. And presumably that's because this lens is kind of set up to block motion under that horizon. So that's gonna cut down on false positives from your animals inside the house. Otherwise, you would keep it uh, right side up facing the ceiling. So let's go back because uh, I'm not so much worried about false positives in my case, so I'm gonna say no. So again, the reset button's gonna face up in this configuration, and the detection angle is gonna be like a 55 degree down angle. This prompt just tells you uh, your different mounting options, whether you sit it on the base or not. And now this is kind of cool. You can change the motion sensitivity distance. So um, long range will be about seven to nine meters, medium will be three to five meters, and short, will be zero to two meters. Off screen, I did some testing and I found that in the kitchen pass through medium works best for my application. When you're in this, you can test it by moving across. As you can see, the light goes on and the app will tell you that you're within the detection range. So if you're curious, you don't need to like blindly figure this out with trial and error. It actually just tells you if you're within the detection range or not uh, directly there in the app live as you wave your hand or walk across uh, in the room. So bingo, that's all set up. And so you might notice there is a little uh, red pointing up arrow in the upper right corner of these. And that's just a reminder to update your firmware. So if you go in here and click on the gear icon in the top right, there's a firmware and battery option and you can push on upgrade. 
So just keep your phone nearby and it's going to upload the firmware onto your device. So now the SwitchBot motion sensor is on firmware version 1.2. And now in the SwitchBot device library, I see both the kitchen motion sensor and the laundry contact sensor all set and ready to go. So now let's mount these SwitchBot contact and motion sensors in my house and we'll set up some intelligent smart home scenes to do some routines for turning the lights on and off in my house. All right, so to better illustrate what we're about to do with the SwitchBot motion sensor, I have a rough floor plan of my house in front of us and I have these recessed lights in the kitchen. And oftentimes people will come in here as a pass through to get a snack and they'll come over, they'll flip on these lights and then they'll head back over to the couch to go ahead and chill out, but they don't turn off the lights. And these are constantly left on. So I already have a switch bot on that light circuit now, but I was looking for a more passive way to detect occupancy in that room and switch off the lights automatically when people leave the room. So I think if I put the SwitchBot motion sensor above the fridge, it should get a good vantage point of that room. And then I can set a SwitchBot scene to automatically shut off these recessed lights when it doesn't detect that anyone's in the room anymore because they're probably chilling out on the couch. So let's go ahead and set that up now. All right, so now we're in the SwitchBot app and we're gonna go down to the bottom and push on the scene icon. And from there, we're gonna push on the create a scene button. And inside the SwitchBot scene settings, you can add several conditions to trigger several actions. So we're going to go under add a condition and then I'll select kitchen and then no motion for I think five minutes sounds good. And notice down here at the bottom, you can also set this with ambient brightness settings if you'd like to tie your condition to the ambient light brightness, but not in my case. So I'm going to click on save. And now that we have it set up for the uh, no motion for five minute condition, I'm going to add an action here and I'm going to select kitchen lights and I'm going to turn those off if there is no motion detected for five minutes. And I'll select that the valid period is all day, but you can set that up for specific days and times. And I'm gonna turn off notifications because I don't need to know. And finally, I can test this if I want. But for now, I'm gonna go up to the top right and press on the check icon. And I just noticed that it defaulted to the name of new scene. So I'm gonna rename that using this pencil icon here. And I'll rename this to vacant kitchen and press OK, and finally the check. All right, so let's see if this works, and if it does, I shouldn't have to fuss at my family so much to shut off lights. All right, so the SwitchBot motion sensor scene successfully turned off our ceiling lights. Let's install the SwitchBot contact sensor next. All right, so now we're gonna set up an Alexa routine using this SwitchBot contact sensor. I'm gonna mount this here on my front door on the frame, so when I come in at night, it will turn on the kitchen lights for me and have Alexa welcome me home. So here's our two halves of the SwitchBot contact sensor, and I like to mount the part that has all the electronics, like the batteries and the circuitry, on the frame because that part doesn't move around, so when you're slamming the door, you're not subjecting this one to as much force. And then the magnet part, I just go ahead and put on the movable frame since it's lighter and doesn't have anything sensitive electronic-wise inside. So all we have to do here is take off the 3M backing and mount that to our door frame. Do the same for the other side. And you're going to want to align this on the bottom of the SwitchBot contact sensor. And that's a nice healthy gap. You don't want to mount it too far away, otherwise the magnet won't trigger. You should see a status light if you did this correctly. All right, so now we're looking here at the home screen of the Alexa app because we're gonna try and set up a routine now to see what sort of automation we can set up using the SwitchBot contact sensor inside the Alexa ecosystem. So down here at the bottom, let's push on more and then push on routines and then click the plus sign in the upper right. And we're gonna give this a routine name of welcome home because we're gonna set up a routine that welcomes us home when we get in from the front door. So on the when this happens, click the plus sign and then go to Smart Home. The front door contact sensor that we set up is listed there, so we're gonna push on that, and then we're gonna set that to open and push Next. And we'll leave that at any time, and then the action we're going to add is Alexa Says, and we're gonna have her welcome us home. So push on Welcome Me Home and click Next. And we're gonna add one more action to turn on the lights when we get in, so click on Plus one more time for Add Action. Go down to Smart Home. And then under all devices, we're gonna look for kitchen lights. And then we're gonna say power them on. So now when the SwitchBot contact sensor opens on the front door, Alexa is going to turn on the lights and welcome us home. 
So now we need to just choose what device is going to welcome us. So we're going to select David's second Echo Plus and then save this routine. And now let's go ahead and test that out. Welcome home. I hope you're having a good day. The only problem I found with Alexa routines is it's not aware of all the value add features that the SwitchBot contact sensor provides other than the just open and close sensing. So let me show you here under the SwitchBot scenes what you can do. So I'm going to add another one and I'm going to call this a new scene that says welcome home to. And so under add conditions, you'll see what I'm talking about. So now we can select our front door. And here you can see the different levels of sensing that you can set for your criteria using the SwitchBot contact sensor. So here, let's go under contact. And here you can see it has simple open and closed as well as a warning for leaving the doors open, which is a nice one. And here at the top, here's some advanced options that you have around exit and entering um, using that physical button that I showed you at the top of the video on the front of the contact sensor. So these top two settings will ignore the opening and closing detection from the contact sensor unless you push the physical button on the front of the contact sensor that I showed you at the beginning of the setup video. So I can select open, and if I don't want it to actually turn on the lights because it's already bright out, I can set the ambient brightness to dim. So now this condition would only trigger when I open the door and the inside of the house is dark. So let's save that. And for the action, again, we can turn on the kitchen lights. We'll turn those on and I'll turn off notifications and save that. So now let's give that a try. Nailed it. All right, so to conclude, I think that the SwitchBot motion and contact sensors fill a need in smart home automation. For me, the motion sensor is key because I have smart light switches in the kids' bedrooms that I want to turn off when they leave the room vacant and forget to turn off their lights. Now, there are vacancy detecting light switches that will do this, but in my case, those light switches aren't at a good angle to detect motion, so they shut off when the kids are reading in the corner of their room, for example. The SwitchBot sensor allows me to place it anywhere and fine tune the detection settings so it shouldn't accidentally shut the lights off on them. Lastly, if there was anything I didn't cover that you have questions about, let me know about them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please click on the like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel to support it. Thanks for watching.